So the last time I and the crew went to Sturgis was the 75th, but we thought it was time to go again, so we picked an anniversary year. Now this isn't gonna be like every anniversary year, and that's because we're technically still in the midst of COVID-19. But it didn't seem that was going to stop Sturgis from happening, whether sanctioned or unsanctioned. Understand, this film is not meant to be political in any way and is merely a documentary of our ride and experiences during Sturgis 2020. Whether you made a choice to attend or not to attend during COVID, as bikers, we should all respect each other's personal decisions. That's always been the biker way, after all. The quiet little town of Sturgis is home to a population of just 6,900 souls normally. However, every year in August, around 500,000 bikers gather in and around Sturgis, South Dakota, and the greater Black Hills area with one common bond, the love of motorcycles and the biker lifestyle. It's a place to cut loose, relax, party, meet people, bond with other bikers, and ride your motorcycle around the beautiful Black Hills area. And leading up to the event, certain media organizations were predicting 2020 attendance numbers were going to be low at around 250,000, while also calling it a super spreader event. But to no surprise of most, that proved to be completely wrong, with nearly 462,000 bikers attending the 10-day event, and those numbers were only down 37,000 from the previous year, which was pre-COVID, of course. There's one thing I can tell you for certain, and that's if you love the motorcycle lifestyle and truly live for riding, Sturgis must be placed on your life's list, and you'll see why in this documentary film. You won't regret it. And yeah, it's true. Sturgis can get a little wild now and then, but it's all in good fun. Now, of course, the main purpose of this nine-day, 3,200-mile road trip through five states was to attend Sturgis and ride and bond with my brothers from the Sworn Few MC. Now, we ride often, but always take one larger multi-chapter trip together each year. But as always... We had a ton of things we needed to pack into this nine day trip. To start, Squirt, who is a hanger on member of the Sworn Fu MC, is seeking to make it to prospective member status, and I'm certain he was in hopes that might happen this trip. There's no quick path to making status jumps within the Sworn Few. Members are heavily vetted and evaluated over time, and not everyone will make it to full member status. Also worth noting is we had the famous Indian John back with our group after taking a leave of absence from the club. It was great to see his smiling face again, and I know we all missed him. The second reason for the trip, you see, many of the members of the Sworn Few crew either work for or are heavily involved with law-abiding biker media behind the scenes in our podcast episodes and videos. And our group had a couple commitments at Black Hills Harley-Davidson. Zero 3D and Rick Rack, both longtime sponsors of Law Abiding Biker Media, had graciously set up times in their respective booths for our beloved audience to stop by for a meet and greet. Of course, we also trust their quality products and have sold them in the Law Abiding Biker store for years, and it was nice to meet company personnel in person for the first time instead of just online. And last but certainly not least, we had a special private day ride plan through the Black Hills and ending at a park in Hot Springs for a catered dinner and social event for our beloved patron members. These members are the epitome of the giving biker community and they really see the big picture and what the biker revolution is all about. We like to treat them special and give them benefits like this as they support us financially so we can continue to help, educate, inspire, and entertain as many bikers as we can worldwide. And what an event it was. But we'll talk about that later. Now, in order to accomplish these things and more, we needed to hit the road. So come right along with our crew and experience what we experienced during our 2020 Sturgis road trip. But make sure you hang on tight because there's a ton to pack into this documentary film and many stories within. We experienced brotherhood, friendship, breathtaking scenery, wild times, 
good food, some debacles, and plenty of laughs. So let's get it on. So the sun finally coming up here. And the reason we're up so early is we have a very long day, day one here. Um, we gotta get through from Washington State here, Eastern Washington State to Missoula, Montana. About 430 miles, and that's about an eight and a half hour day saddle time. Of course, with stops and lunch and all that, you're gonna look at it like a 12 hour day. So our goal is to be in before dark. Hey, it's Lurch. Good timing. Starbucks, I need some coffee. Oh, Oscar's here. <laughs> Lurch. Really? Hey, buddy. Nectar of the gods. Yeah, a little caffeine in the morning before we get going. Mm. Yours looks kind of so like a sissy but drink, it's a, though. It's worth it. Oh, it's so it's good, like, though. It's got caramel. It. Oh, mm. so good. Not you ready for Sturgis 80th anniversary? I'm ready, baby. It's rock and roll. Let's do it. Oscar. Let's you ready? This. I'm ready. It's about time. Fucking been waiting forever. So, Lurch, Oscar, and I were finally headed out for our nine day trip, and I was excited to say the least. At the same time, and north of us, in Wenatchee, Washington, the guys from the Big River crew were leaving to do the same, as were the Red Mountain crew out of Richland, Washington, to the southeast of us. We were all going to converge on the small farm town of Othello, Washington, and leave as one combined group from there. And as usual, I was testing several pieces of progressive riding gear out during this trip that were sent to me, as was Lurch. Check this YouTube channel out and our podcast for our thoughts and detailed reviews on each item. Now, there's nothing but wide open space and farmland as we made our way towards Othello. I felt good vibes for the trip as we were truly blessed with a beautiful, cool 65 degree ride this morning. We just kicked back, relaxed, and throttled our way east on Highway 24. And we rolled into Othello at around 9 a.m. But apparently, we didn't get the memo on which convenience store to meet at. So, while Lurch figured out where everyone else was, Oscar did, well, what Oscar always does. I don't want to that, waste Dude, away. show that thing. That's like a, it's like just a big. I already ate half of it. What How is it? That's good. Yeah? Considering it's in Othello. <laughs> ate like three pounds of chicken. Oh. What now? I didn't get this skinny by skipping meals. Not far away, we finally met up with the other crews, and it was great to see everyone. The time now is 9.34. We pulled in sharp at 9.01 a.m. <laughs> we got our bro hugs out of the way, and everyone was in good spirits. But we had already wasted a half hour not meeting at the same location, so we saddled up and hit the road east out of Othello to ride more wide open spaces and farmlands. But several of us knew what was coming up soon. And in the middle of nowhere, we entered the small farming town of Colfax, Washington, with a population of 2,800. This is where we'd get off Highway 26 and then head south on Highway 195. And the farmlands, well, they continued as far as the eye could see. But we were bearing down on a special road I had picked near where we'd hit the Idaho border near Lewiston.
and then it appeared, the lookout over the old spiral highway, which drops you down into Lewiston, Idaho. If you ever find yourself here, take some time to visit the lookout, as there are some breathtaking views as you overlook the confluence of the Snake and Clearwater Rivers. We got Corey here. Hey, hey, he's I'm on a, out, he's got a cam this year, a B cam. Yeah. He's doing some photos too for us, so that's awesome. We finished at the lookout and it was time to ride what we'd all been waiting for, the old spiral highway. This highway was constructed in 1917 and is a short highway at only 7.3 miles long. But it's a motorcyclist paradise with 64 curves within those miles. You traverse down into Lewiston, Idaho, dropping 2,000 feet of elevation. It has plenty of twists, turns, and dramatic switchbacks. My suggestion, do not skip this highway if you're in the area. It's a secret gem. By the time we hit Lewiston, it had warmed up to 90 degrees. We fueled up quickly, and everyone was smiling ear to ear after that little highway. We hit the road and headed east out of Lewiston on Highway 12 towards Lolo Pass, snaking along the beautiful Clearwater River. We'd need to make a lunch stop, but for now, everyone just settled in and enjoyed the scenery. The other day I heard you were out. To disturb my view from here I can see clear So it was time for a lunch stop I had pre-planned at the North Fork Cafe in the unincorporated community of Asaka, Idaho. Population, 181. And I think the boys were wondering why I had pre-planned to stop at this place, literally in the middle of nowhere. How did we find this place? I can't remember. I found it. So I think You're correct. I, I picked this because it's halfway in between Missoula and Yakima, and it was really uh, only a couple choices. So That or we just knock on somebody's door and see if they the, feed us. Huh? They might. I don't know. And as always, I made sure to pick a place that had cold beer. Because even if the food is bad, a cold beer will get you through it. <laughs> Mango wheat. Mango is pretty good. River yeah. rat. Yeah. Yeah. Is it hard? Yeah. Dude, that is old an ice cold Ronnie. Yeah. Just, just travel 300 miles to get an ice cold Ronnie. <laughs> yeah, mom. Where are you sitting? It became clear that this was a small family run business in this tiny community, and the staff were super friendly and had amazing service. The food was certainly decent, as you'd expect to find in a locally owned mom and pop's place such as this. I didn't hear anyone complaining and I certainly like supporting good, hardworking folks like this. So if you find yourself in Osaka, Idaho, stop by the North Fork Cafe and say hi. It was 90 degrees out when we left Osaka, but we all knew it would cool a bit soon as we gained elevation towards Lolo Pass. It's about a three hour ride via Highway 12 from Osaka to the summit of Lolo Pass, but we were raring to go now having eaten. 
And yeah, Lolo Pass is well worth the ride. Check it out. So we got to the summit of Lolo Pass and stopped for a few, and we learned there was a slight issue with Squirt and Cowboy, who were riding non-touring models, and they only have 4.7 gallon tanks instead of six. Trying to figure out Nothing. if we're gonna make it to the next we're gas stop, go. or we're gonna get left on the side of the road in Montana. Go How many miles do you have on your tank left? Hopefully, hopefully 24, because gas is in 22. That Cowboy's math. light's been off the last 36 that miles. That math does not work out. I'll just get going real good, I'll pull the clutch, we'll put it in neutral, and we'll, <laughs> this we'll is, coaster there. This is so ghetto. He's drinking, he asked me he's what? drinking octane boost. <laughs> That's not, you could have put that in their tank at least. Fire what him. I do know is yeah, if you weren't so stubborn <laughs> and decided I'm going to wait, I'm going to be the guy who waits over a year to get a street glide. That's true. Oh. You wouldn't be in this predicament right now. We'd all have the same amount of gas. That's true. Oh yes, I got five bucks on we it. We got bets on this now. I'm with you. I'll throw 10 that Cowboy's out first. Oh, 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 oh yeah. So much fun we're having yeah, yeah, it's not even that? moving, Cowboy. No. It's, it's not even moving. We took off from the summit and deep down we were all hoping both bikes would make it 22 miles to the nearest gas station but i know we all had our doubts if that happened we'd be significantly delayed getting into missoula and to everyone's disbelief both bikes made it to the first fuel station we came to in lolo montana without running out everyone fueled up and we headed towards missoula montana which was 10 miles away now via highway 93 and i know everyone was ready to unask for the day get some grub and drink a cold beer. Missoula is nestled in the northern Rockies of Montana, surrounded by seven wilderness areas and at the confluence of three rivers. Missoula is an outdoor enthusiast's dream. You can kayak, raft, or tube through downtown, or take a hike in the large wilderness areas surrounding it. Missoula is known for its blue ribbon trout fishing, and the outdoor recreational opportunities are limitless. It felt good to be pulling into the hotel after a long day, but it was 7 p.m. now as we'd lost an hour changing time zones. Waiting for us at the hotel was Big Daddy Kane as he and his partner had left Washington State at a different time than us and just bombed the freeway all the way to Missoula via the interstate instead of the scenic route we took. We all swiftly headed to a restaurant within walking distance called the Stone Accord. It felt good to sit down, drink some beer, laugh, and relax with the crew. There is some good comfort food at this restaurant, and several of us indulged in the shepherd's pie, which I highly recommend. We left dinner, and part of the crew wanted to start the first evening of the trip out by making bad decisions, and decided to stop by the liquor store on the walk back to the hotel. Some of the crew ended up in a room having drinks into the night, while others of us made our way straight to our rooms. We had another long day ahead of us, and morning would come quickly. Morning, sunshine. Morning. How are you? I am great. Good. It's going to be another beautiful day. Every day is beautiful on the it, bike. It is, absolutely. <laughs> so, day two had arrived, and some of us were up early and ready to go for the day. A group of us headed out to the nearest Starbucks as coffee was going to be a must to get this day started. 
We were also learning that COVID rules by location would vary greatly during this trip. Yeah. Can't go in the Starbucks in Missoula. It's drive through only, so we're going to do a walk through. Walk through. Yeah, a 20 ounce pike with cream and then a large, a giant water. <laughs> Oscar, this is cool, dude. Slow down. Oh, sorry. Knowing that some were still back at the hotel getting up last minute, we got a call from Indian John and he told us why. That goddamn Lee in that vodka. <laughs> yep. It's not good for Indians. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, the bad decision makers arrived at our location. Top of the morning. It's going to be a beautiful one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, Lee, you, you know what? He's he's a bad influence. Yeah, That's so you're just learning say. that? I'm going to show you running. I'm not running any type of a show. This is, I'm just I, he didn't force me to do anything. Okay. Thank you, Terrence. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> finally speaks the truth. Indian John threw you under the bus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Popeye's balls. Popeye's balls. <laughs> now that we had the entire crew, we headed out of Missoula, Montana at 8.30 a.m. And it was a gorgeous morning. We had a big day ahead of us. Our goal was to get to Billings, Montana, which is about 475 miles and nine hour saddle time via the route we were taking. But we were in store for some badass riding along the way. But we'll get to that in a bit. For now, we just throttled down eastbound on Interstate 90 and enjoyed the scenery around us. So the girls stay out the yards you found All the things you have to know about life What if Jesus had a brother Singing Sunday, Tuesday, cause And it wasn't long before we'd purposely get off I-90 and avoid a long section of it by taking Scenic Highway 1 to the south, then to the east through some absolutely beautiful areas. It's always nice when you can plan to get off the freeway to ride roads like this one. You should definitely hit this highway if riding through the area. And wow, what a little gem Highway 1 was. This day so far was truly a gift from God. We went through Anaconda, Montana, population 9,000, and just outside Anaconda to the east is where Highway 1 runs back into I-90, which we need to get back onto eastbound to cover some miles quickly and continue our journey towards this day's destination. We'd basically throttle down for what seemed like endless miles. We'd then skirt around Butte and Bozeman, Montana via Interstate 90, and it was getting plain hot out at this point. These long sections of I-90 in Montana are interesting to ride. Although you're on the interstate system, there is still much beauty to behold. Then you come up on sections that are rather flat and straight. But even during the less desired riding, we are still smiling ear to ear because hey, we're riding with brothers in Montana and on our way to Sturgis. Oh, and we knew some amazing riding was still to come later this day. 
We rolled into Livingston, Montana a little afternoon. We made our way to a restaurant called Montana's Rib Chop House, which we had visited five years prior during our last Sturgis trip. The last restaurant gave me a mask. Oh, nice. And I'm going to repurpose it at another establishment. Thank you, Montana. What you do? Just if you're rolling through Livingston, definitely stop at this place. It has a variety of cold beers on tap to choose from, and the environment has a great vibe. The service is good, as is the food. Five years ago, I had the buffalo chicken salad, so I went with it again and was not disappointed. We all relaxed and visited about the great riding ahead of us this afternoon. Today is awesome, but we haven't hit the best part of today, which is Beartooth, which is coming up, so I'm super excited for that. Have you been on Beartooth? No, nope, I haven't. Oh, dude, you guys are gonna love it. All right. God's country. It's coming. Several of the guys were given butt buffer seat cushions to test out during this trip. These are medical grade seat cushions and unlike any others on the market. In fact, we liked them so much, we made a place for them right in the Law Abiding Biker store. You won't be disappointed. Left about just over 200 miles on it so far. And I gotta say it helps. It With our bellies full, we made our way to a nearby gas station. Oh, you ready yeah. for Beartooth Pass? I'm ready. Remember five years ago? I do. We're doing it again, bro. It was 90 degrees out now, and we just wanted to get moving. We headed south towards Gardner, Montana, which is about 60 miles away via Highway 89. It starts off flat, but once you gain some elevation, it gets really nice. We rolled into Gardner, Montana, which sits just north of the Wyoming border and hosts the north entrance to Yellowstone National Park. Oh, and what Lurch is about to tell you may or may not be true. Do the girls in Montana shave their no, legs? not at all. Not at all? They're hairy like bears. Did you look that up on Wikipedia? No, it's just a well-known fact. Everybody knows that. You gotta stay warm in these Montana winters. Do they shed? That's a good question. I would assume so. <laughs> and just to the south of Gardner, we entered Yellowstone National Park. An annual park pass will get you in at the gate. And my suggestion is to partner up with another bike because one pass gets two bikes in at all national parks and lands. We rode eastbound along the north end of Yellowstone, just inside Wyoming, along the Grand Loop Road. Once well inside Yellowstone, we actually got onto Highway 212, which would take us to the heart of Beartooth Pass and eventually back towards Billings, Montana. As expected, riding through Yellowstone is just awesome at lower speeds, and the scenery speaks for itself. On past rides, we've ridden much deeper into Yellowstone, and I highly recommend it. And you never know what wildlife you'll get to see inside the park. But be aware, bison are definitely the local gang in charge. And finally, what all of us had been dreaming about this day. Yep, we officially arrived at Beartooth Pass. The Beartooth Highway officially opened on June 14, 1936. It is the highest elevation paved highway in the northern Rocky Mountains, open to travelers seasonally from May to October. Beartooth Pass is 68 miles long 
and at the summit the elevation is 10,947 feet. There are plenty of corners, switchbacks, and breathtaking views at lookouts along the way. There is a small window in the summer months for motorcycles to ride and enjoy this highway, but be aware, it's been known to snow even in the middle of summer. I rode this past five years ago and riding it this day was like riding it for the first time again. Yeah, it's that good and easily makes it on my top 10 list. And if you want to know our top 10 list of roads that we've personally ridden, head over to episode 199 of the Law Abiding Biker podcast where we reveal that and more. It was late in the day after riding Beartooth Pass and we needed to make some time to get to Billings, Montana and avoid riding in the dark as much as possible. Oh, and Squirt was starting to realize the pains of riding a non-touring bike on a long trip such as this. We pulled into Billings after dark at 8.10 p.m., and I know everyone was very satisfied, yet tired, thirsty, and hungry. We wasted no time unpacking and getting checked into our hotel rooms. From there, it was a short walk to the Montana Brewing Company. I highly recommend this place. The ambiance was relaxing after our long day. The food was excellent, as was the service, and there are plenty of beers to choose from. It felt so nice to end this day relaxing and reminiscing about the day and gearing up for what tomorrow would bring us. Everyone was beat, so it was a straight walk back to the hotel, and everyone hit their rooms for some sleep. There'd be no after-hour events this night. Today a short day for us, 388 miles, uh, about seven hours saddle time from Billings, Montana here where we're at Starbucks this morning and we're going to get to Rapid City uh, where we have a house there and uh, we're going to stay in that for quite a few days. Today I think uh, Devil's Tower, yep. starting the day out right, the Backwoods Cigar. A little Backwoods and a little coffee. It's going to be a good day. Oh, and Lurch I forgot to tell you. We're also going to hit Deadwood City Ooh, exciting. today. I haven't been there before. I look forward to it. Fun little town. And what a gorgeous morning in Billings, which is the largest city in the state of Montana, with a population of about 110,000. It was shaped by the Yellowstone River and is sheltered by the rims. Billings is experiencing rapid growth, far more than any other city in Montana. Billings was nicknamed the Magic City because of its rapid growth from its founding as a railroad town in March 1882. It is one of the largest trade areas in the U.S. Billings offers events, hospitality, shopping, and cuisine in the downtown area. There is also plenty of rodeo action to see along with fishing, hunting, hiking, and other outdoor activities surrounding Billings. I found the city to be very clean and it was a great experience. I'd love to come back someday and spend more time here. So while Lurch and I enjoyed our coffee, some of the crew were back at the hotel representing the best of the biker community and how bikers willingly help each other. This rider's starter went bad. And remember, when you're out on the road and meet another biker, pay it forward, as this is a representation of the true biker community. You ready for another awesome day? Yeah, buddy. We left the hotel in Billings at 9 a.m. Unfortunately, we had to start the day on a very flat section of Interstate 90 for about 60 miles. But it was a beautiful sunny morning to ride at 65 degrees and a great way to get warmed up and get the blood flowing. And after that little warm up, we got off I 90 to ride east on Highway 212 for the next two hours to try and make it to Brodus, Montana for lunch. 
Getting off I-90, I thought maybe the riding would get a little better, but that didn't happen as we rode fairly straight roads along Highway 212 in very desolate and dry areas of the Northern Cheyenne Indian Reservation. We all just pressed on with laying down the miles. We'd eventually go through the small town of Lame Deer, in literally the middle of nowhere. And after that, we got into some areas that at least had some trees, which definitely spiced up the ride a bit. By the time we hit a gravel lot fuel station in Ashland, Montana, it had warmed to 85 degrees. And you really never know what will happen at our stops. And it was decided Squirt's bike needed a roadside modification. Do you have your spinach? Did you forget to have your spinach? Tanner's like, oh, oh. Tanner's like, I realize I have a fishing line oh, right here. Nice. <laughs> your bike's gonna go at least 100 miles yep. an hour oh, faster. Yeah. Hopefully. You can get the other one. Hey, Come on, Wimpy. Fingers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got the honey buckets. Hey, John. Does this make my body look small? After our break in fuel, we throttled east again on Highway 212 as it warmed to 95 degrees as we made our way towards Brodus. Now, I don't think anyone in their right mind really wants to visit the town of Brodus, but we absolutely did. As we knew, we'd get a break from this riding. We just wanted to get there at this point. We finally made it to the happening town of Brodus, Montana. Population 475, and I guarantee everyone wanted to unass and forget some of that long, boring ride. We arrived at Big Sky Bar and wasted no time making our way inside to escape the 95 degree heat. Now, many may consider this establishment a dive, and, well, I'd certainly understand why at first glance. However, I think nostalgic places like this can add to the overall experience of a long distance road trip. Small towns and places like this are spread all across America, and when you enter, it's as if time has stopped. They have history behind them, and if they could speak, they'd have many stories to tell. And inside these places are hard-working folks making an honest living each day. The food, you ask? Well, it was edible. And if you want a cold beer with your meal, you really have no other choices. So if you're riding through Brodus, give it a shot. We headed out of Brodus in 95 degree heat to finish our battle with Highway 212, heading east. And yes, it's even worse riding this highway in the heat. It's long, straight, flat, and does not really offer anything. But you have to ride roads like this during any trip to get to certain places. Luckily, it was only one hour of riding on Highway 212 towards Alzada, Montana. From there, we would get off of it and head south on Highway 112, entering Wyoming from Montana, and make our way closer to one of our main goals for this day. The riding quickly improved, and I know everyone felt some relief. At Hewlett, Wyoming, you get off Highway 112 and get onto Highway 24, continuing south. It's worth mentioning that during Sturgis, you can throw that customary biker wave out the door as you get closer to the event, because you'd literally be riding with one hand out and waving the entire time. Don't worry, nobody is offended and everyone knows why. And along Highway 24 to the west sits the famous Devil's Tower, which was one of our goals for this day, and we finally made it. It was packed with bikers, as you'd expect. I know our crew was excited to arrive, and that annual Parks Pass I mentioned earlier will get you in the gate, or you can pay much more on the spot. It's definitely worth entering the park and riding up to the tower. So here we are hiking up part way anyways to Devil's Tower to check it out. We're not gonna go all the way around, but uh, try to get to a point here where we can see it better. 
Devil's Tower is a national phenomenon and looks out of place in comparison to the rest of the landscape. It rises 867 feet from its base and it is formed of rugged rock. Devil's Tower was declared America's very first national monument in 1906 by President Theodore Roosevelt, who sought to protect it as an object of scientific interest. Geologists have studied the formation since the late 1800s and today still wonder how it was formed. There are also many tales of aliens using the tower. There is a 1.3 mile paved trail around its base that you can walk. I highly recommend visiting Devil's Tower if you're riding through. And that is Devil's Tower. Worth a stop, Squid? Very much so. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. It's pretty cool. Yes. We left Devil's Tower south on Highway 24 and shortly after got into Highway 14 East, which isn't a bad ride at all. Highway 14 eventually popped us out into I-90, where we'd throttle down eastbound and then cross into South Dakota from Wyoming. And you definitely know you're closing in on Sturgis when there are more bikes on the freeway than cars, which is a really cool thing to experience. We got off I-90 and headed south on Highway 85 for a short distance. This highway would lead us all the way into the famous Deadwood City. And wow, it was absolutely packed with bikers to say the least. It became apparent at this point that the Sturgis Rally 2020 was in full effect. In Deadwood, it became immediately clear that we were going to get to meet a ton of awesome bikers from all over who took the time to stop us and say hi, and we were all humbled by that. You see, law-abiding biker media has seen rapid growth over the past many years, and we had not been to a large biker event such as this recently. I want to thank the entire biker community for your continued support of law-abiding biker media. It really does mean a lot to me. In 1876, the historic Wild West town of Deadwood was born when prospectors came across a gulch full of dead trees and a creek full of gold. This was all part of the Black Hills Gold Rush. Legends roam these streets like Wild Bill Hickok, Calamity Jane, and Seth Bullock. Deadwood is a must stop during Sturgis or any time you're riding through the area. You won't be disappointed. There are plenty of shops, casinos, saloons, and restaurants to visit. And although Deadwood is a cool place to visit, it was getting late and we were tired. So we headed south on Highway 385 out of Deadwood to make our way one hour to the day's final destination for some R&R. We'd finish off by heading east on Highway 14 and it cooled to 80 degrees. This was a great ride to end the day, like icing on the cake. We arrived in Rapid City at about 7.45 p.m. and made our way to our final destination, which is a private residence where we'd be staying and operating out of for the next four days. It was a great feeling to arrive. Honey, I'm home. There's always something that doesn't go as planned and Oscar's handlebars had been pulling back on him during this day's ride. Why, you ask? Well, it's Oscar and I'm certain there's a good reason why. Well, it has been seven years. That's true. And, and I, you put a lot of miles. And I fuck around pulling on the bars all the time like they're a, like yeah. a jungle gym. Yeah. <laughs> and quite honestly, Oscar likely pulls on other things too. But we'll stop there. TMI. 
The great thing is that we all had our trusty Cruise Tools Emergency Roadside Repair Roll-Up Kits, along with our Cruise Tools Multi-Tools, and we could not have repaired Oscar's bike without these. This handlebar issue would have resulted in a costly dealership or mechanics repair bill. But instead, with the common size hardy tools in the cruise tool kits and a bit of time, the guys easily repaired this problem, gaining access to and tightening the clamp. We have also used our beloved cruise tools on past road trips. We trust these kits and that's why we carry them right in the law abiding biker store for Harley, Indian and other metric motorcycles. And after this, it was definitely time to call it a day. Everyone was spent. So we would be operating out of this private residence in Rapid City for the next four days and are so blessed these kind folks allowed us to take over their home as we did so five years ago. Rapid City is the second most populous city in South Dakota with a population of around 75,000. Rapid City was founded in 1876 by a group of disheartened prospectors that had come to the Black Hills in search of gold. The city is known as the Gateway to the Black Hills and the City of Presidents because of the life-sized bronze president statues downtown. Now, I like visiting the city of Sturgis for the actual event, but actually staying in downtown Sturgis does not appeal to me and some others. After all, Rapid City is only a 30 minute ride east from Sturgis via Interstate 90 and I consider Rapid City a hub from where you can head to Sturgis, into the Black Hills or visit the vendor event at Black Hills Harley-Davidson. It's so nice to be able to leave some of the chaos of Sturgis behind and then ride back to Rapid City after a long day. It's a wind down of sorts and part of the experience in my opinion. With that said, Sturgis Jeff and his wife Janet have rented and stayed in a bedroom in the same small house in downtown Sturgis for many years, and they don't mind. So, each to their own. We had a little downtime this morning, and it felt great. Our first obligation was not until 11 a.m. at Black Hills Hardy-Davidson, which is about a 10-minute ride and sits northwest of downtown Rapid City. We had some public meet and greet scheduled with two of our beloved longtime sponsors. And although we had a solid plan for the day, something unexpected would happen later this day. Anyways, we rolled out rocking our brand new and fresh Law Abiding Biker t-shirts that Big Daddy Kane had made for the entire crew prior to this trip. If interested, you can also get these shirts and other support gear right in the Law Abiding Biker store. It helps support us to keep producing biker content and large documentary films like this. And as expected, Black Hills Harley Davidson was packed. Now, if you're not familiar, during Sturgis, this dealership is really a separate event. It is definitely a motorcycle vendor event with many industry names showcasing their products and services in their respective spaces. Many of these companies, such as two of our sponsors, Ciro 3D and Rick Rack, have extra personnel on hand and offer free installation if you purchase at the event. They also offer special event-only deals on products and although it's an exhausting event for vendors, traditionally, they do very well financially. Now, many predicted sales figures would be down due to COVID-19. However, talking with different vendors, that did not seem to be the case at all. All the naysayers on the 2020 Sturgis event seem to be wrong once again. Rick Rack Booth. Yeah, buddy. Even here before 11 o'clock. Yeah. In style. Yeah. Our first public meet and greet was scheduled from 11 to 1 in the Rick Rack booth and from 1 to 3 in the Ciro 3D booth. Now, we have tested, reviewed, installed, and released many videos on both of these companies' products right on our YouTube channel. We trust all these products, and for this reason, we carry them right in the Law Abiding Biker Store, where you can also view our videos on the product listings. We are just a bunch of bikers helping bikers and not a bloated online store just trying to sell you anything. One of Rick Rack's staple products is their quick detached strapless luggage system in which many of us were using during this trip and past trips over many thousands of miles. I love my Rick Rack system because in less than 30 seconds it clamps to my luggage rack on my street glide and I'm on my way. It comes off just as quickly when I get to my destination each day. There are no straps to fuss with that can come loose or blow around and damage your paint. 
Oscar and Big Daddy clamped their rickrack luggage systems to the luggage racks on the top of their trunks, doubling their storage space for this trip. Once you use rickrack, you'll never go back. Rickrack also has many other useful and quality products that we use and sell in our store. Zero 3D has a wide variety of innovative products for your Harley Davidson or Honda Goldwing. They really are the industry leaders when it comes to high quality, reliable, and easy to install plug and play LED lighting for your bike, which makes you more visible to motorists for safety and gives your bike a great look. We personally have a bunch of awesome Zero 3D products on our bikes, and we put out a ton of videos on our YouTube channel so you can easily install these great products yourself. Zero 3D has other great products too, and one of my most used is my beloved cup holder, which I could not live without when riding long distance and short distance when I just need to pick up a coffee. Now, I honestly didn't know what to expect, but the meet and greets, well, they went very well, and I was deeply humbled by the large amount of bikers that took the time out of their day to stop by and say hi to me and the crew and visit. To this day, the unbelievable and good-hearted biker community are the driving force behind why I still do what I do. There really is no better group of people to serve. In my heart, I know that I love meeting these bikers more than they like meeting me, and I know the same goes for the rest of the crew. We love talking with bikers and learning about them. This opportunity allowed me to meet so many down-to-earth bikers, and they were from so many different places. The biker community is really just one big family, and this event proved that the biker revolution is full speed ahead. I want to thank each of you for stopping by in the 95 degree heat to say hi. It really meant a lot to all of us. My mouth's uh, uh, dry, but we could find no good beers. So. No IPAs. Still better no, than no, no craft beer. beer yeah. but That's I guess. We'll it's, no beer. it's cold. Yeah. Bad beer. It was also really nice meeting Zero 3D and Rick Rack personnel for the first time in person. Hi, yourself. Kelsey. Kelsey, this good is Kelsey. It's good to meet you in so, person, yeah. finally. Down to earth, Zero 3D, great people, bikers, just, it's awesome working yeah. with companies like yours. Shane invited us to the booth uh, to uh, hang out for a couple hours today here at Rick Rack booth. It's nice to finally meet you. You too, man. Right. Love it. <laughs> I've banked with Zero. Yes, very cool. Thanks for having us to your booth. Thank you. Yeah. Yo, man. Darren Good from Zero 3D. I've talked to this guy a lot, but it's so nice meeting him in person. Designers, Chris, one of the designers here at Zero. Nice yeah. to meet you in person, hey bro. Although they've been longtime sponsors and we sell their items in our store, we'd never actually met any of them in person and just online up to this point. And we finally get together. Yeah, I mean, we're, this, this after years. Man. I know everybody online, but I know them in person now. Yeah, so it's so no, cool. It's and of course, in person is so much better and they were so down to earth. Neither of these companies just want to sell you something. You see, they are actual bikers and truly understand the needs of bikers and develop their products around serving the biker community. That is very much our approach here at Law Abiding Biker Media, and we try to align ourselves with like-minded companies like these. And at some point during these events, Papa must have got sore from all the handshakes and, well, he snuck off for a massage. Don't tell. He's definitely getting old. Bad decisions are being made today. <laughs> and apparently Squirt was in the full realization now that if he was going to hang with us, he'd need an actual touring bike. You see, we don't just stand around at events to look pretty. Well, because we're definitely not. Nope. Instead, we live to ride and lay down the miles. With the assistance of his elder, Squid, to properly guide him, they were in the dealership talking numbers on a street glide. Oh, and surprise, Oscar was eating like usual. And apparently, I heard Big Daddy had arrived at the dealership earlier in the morning and may also be working on a new bike deal. Heck, I can't keep track of this crew. They're like a bunch of squirrels. It was hot and we were exhausted by the time we finished the meet and greets and we wanted to head out for some R&R. &R. But I suddenly learned we had one more thing to do. And that's because Big Daddy Kane, well... He apparently traded in his trike for a brand new and beautiful Ultra Limited. Even more interesting is that right after he traded the trike in, another gentleman bought it. Yeah, Black Hills HD moves a ton of bikes during Sturgis and they're set up for it. The buyer of the used trike had been patiently waiting for hours for us to be done. Are you the proud owner of the trike here? Yeah. You waiting on this jack wagon over here to come back? Yeah. We're sorry. The reason? 
Well, Big Daddy Kane had made a deal, and part of that deal was we needed to remove some of the items from the trike, and the crew stepped in to help. But in true biker spirit, Big Daddy left a few gifts for him. You leaving the uh, biker gripper on there for this guy? I am. Nicely done. I told him about the zero lights, nice. the LED fangs. And Big Daddy rode his new bike into the sunset. Well, I guess he drove it directly to the Ciro 3D booth instead. Big Daddy's bike on the lift here at Ciro 3D. Uh, what are we putting on it? Frame mounted adjustable highway peg mount so he can be comfy on the ride back. And apparently Squirt and Squid, well, they didn't land a deal on that new street glide. Maybe he'd try again another day. Okay, so we were truly exhausted now from the long hot day and it felt darn good to leave on the bike and catch some airflow heading back into Rapid City, where we'd stop at the Firehouse Brewing Company on Main Street. You should definitely stop at this historic place. The building originally served as headquarters for the Rapid City Fire Department. The department inevitably outgrew the old station and moved. Taking advantage of this former use, the Firehouse Brewing Company is home to an established restaurant, brewery, and playhouse where food, drinks, and drama are served up amid the brick walls that have stood now for a full century. After the long day, it felt so good to enjoy a cold beer, good meal in this fun environment. We arrived back at our house for the finish of the day, and Popeye's muscles, well, they were loose now from his earlier massage, so he felt it necessary to perform his custom mod to Big Daddy's brand new bike. Oh yeah. Just takes a little man strength. First modification on the new Ultra Limited. Yeah. Nicely Safety. done. Safety first. <laughs> Next, it was an installation of Ciro 3D Fang LED signal lights on Cowboy Street Bob, and as you can see, he was super excited about them. Oh, and I'll mention Oscar put a large deep scratch in my face shield while closing my helmet in his trunk that I'd have to ride around with for the rest of the trip. I love you anyways, Oscar. And to round out the day, the boys were due for some bad decision making because it had been a couple nights since their last one. So a few of them decided to leave into town in an Uber. And well, we'll see how that works out for them in the morning. And meanwhile, so of course, in the evenings, um, we uh, handle a lot of law abiding biker stuff, which we don't mind, but we're here at our residence and uh, we're on the laptops, Lurch is in the other room, and uh, we're trying to take care of everybody. So, uh, answering emails with beer is the best way to answer. Lab policy, <laughs> gotta have a beer. All right, here we are day five. I believe today we are going to ride the Badlands. I'm trying to get out of here at a decent time because it's gonna be a scorcher at 100 degrees, so. Oh, and a few of the guys didn't make such good decisions. Ubered into town last night to some local bars, so I'm not sure if they're gonna make it. This is what happens when you make poor decisions late at night. <laughs> poor decision-making skills, boys. <laughs> Just sleepy. <laughs> Just sleepy, Just yes. Just a little tired. Please. Squid are good decision-making skills. Yeah. You come with us? No. You're not? I'm uh, not I need yeah. to rest. At least he's a man and he admits that he's not just sleepy. He's yes. just hung over. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna rock that bike today? Oh, hell no. He's, sli I'm he's not, sleeping. I'm not young enough for this thing. So suffice to say that there are a plethora of things to do and experience in and around the greater Sturgis and Black Hills area. Over the next three days, we would experience things that were on our personal itinerary and I'm going to share those with you. And yes, on multiple occasions, we spent time in downtown Sturgis, but we'll get to that and more a bit later in this documentary. Just understand, there is more to Sturgis than meets the eye, so don't miss it all by just staying in the downtown area. And if you've been to Sturgis, please comment below and share with the biker community here about some of your favorite things to do and places to visit. Today, of course, was to ride to Badlands. And the group that actually got out of bed and made it headed eastbound on I-90 from Rapid City at about 9.40 a.m. And as you can see by the riding attire, it was already getting hot. Oh, and the word hot would be an understatement as we progressed through this day. 
One of the stops on your journey to the Badlands should definitely be Wall, South Dakota, population 875. This city was established in the summer of 1907 as a railroad station for the Chicago and Northwestern Railroad and formally incorporated as a city of Wall in 1908. Today, Wall has become a hub for tourism and is often referred to as the gateway to the Badlands. Wall hosts millions of travelers every summer with as many as 20,000 visitors a day during the peak tourist season. The Wall Drug Mall is a main attraction and is very large. The mall and stores around it offer plenty of places to shop. Always a good place to stop and uh, make sure and get some trinkets to take home to the kids. If you ruin, if you ruin that, you're going to hell because that's for the kids, it's trinkets. And Why if you, you having me carry it? If you ruin that, like Listen, you ruined my helmet. Next time, dude, you have to bring your own carry your own shit. You're bringing a trailer. <laughs> what did Big Daddy get? Look at this, dude. Cindy bought me a crushable Stetson. Nice. Wall Drugs Western Art Gallery restaurant seats more than 500 people and is known for its famous homemade donuts, rolls, pie and ice cream, legendary hot beef sandwiches with mashed potatoes and homemade gravy, and buffalo burgers. Pretty good buffalo burger. Is it? Much more was a little breakfast action. Oh yeah. All American, baby. Because I am an all American. Yeah. After you finish in Wall with a full belly, you head south towards the Badlands on Highway 240, and it was 95 degrees out now. But that would actually be cool compared to what we were heading into. Just prior to the entrance to Badlands is a water filling station in the middle of nowhere. And you should definitely top off with water during the summer months. Mm -hmm. Is it cold? Mm. 82.3. It's colder than the water I had, but kind of tastes weird, quite honestly. Your parks pass will get you in the park, and the last time I rode Badlands was five years ago. So I was excited to see her again and reveal what maybe I had missed the first time. You definitely should take the time to ride through and explore this area if you visit Sturgis, but just be prepared. It was 104 degrees out now with a wind that felt like a giant blow dryer. This park protects roughly 242,000 acres of sharply eroded buttes and pinnacles, along with the largest undisturbed mixed grass prairie in the U.S. Skeletons of three-toed horses and saber-toothed cats are among the many fossilized species found here. There are plenty of places along the way where you can stop and overlook the Badlands. You can spend time reading about the area, exploring, and of course, take some pictures. Visiting the Badlands, you really feel like you've landed on another planet. It is really a godforsaken land and a harsh environment for most, yet so very beautiful and majestic in its own way. As we approached the south end of the park, we got off of Highway 240 and onto Highway 377 for a short distance to head back west towards Rapid City. The tiny town just outside the south gate of Badlands National Park is called Interior, and it is the oldest Badlands town, dating back to the 1880s. This one-horse town, with a population of 100, offers nothing really, but at this point, we were happy it existed, because we were hot and thirsty. We stopped by a place called Cowboy's Corner, and you never know what you'll find at these stops. I was certainly intrigued by the Harley parked out front. To the guy who's rocking an actual HD handy cam on his dash with a custom plate. That's pretty cool, old school. Now this bike had certainly seen some miles. And the rider, well, we discovered him inside. We learned he rode this old Harley 2,150 miles from Laconia, New Hampshire to Sturgis. Not once, not twice, but 44 rides to Sturgis. You missed one year. Wow, very cool. 
Yeah, now this dude's the real deal, and it was nice talking with him. Meeting random bikers like this is always one of the best experiences when on these long road trips. Oh, and I might suggest one of our Rick Rack quick detach luggage systems for this guy. I started looking around for everyone else, and who would have known? Yeah, they found a beer tent that was set up on the property, and apparently only during Sturgis. Now this is what you call a true oasis. They have raspberry you find the beer mango. tent in the middle of nowhere. All right, found me. Just a pro, bro. It found me. <laughs> so, bring back memories from five years ago? Yes. It too was 104 degrees last time too. <laughs> It was, and it feels the same. It feels exactly yeah, the same. It's, it's yeah. bad lands. Bad lands. There you go. <laughs> and of course, there's always time for a food dare. We figured these pork hocks were just fine sitting out in the 104 degree heat. Do it. What do you think, Lurch? You won't die. No, <laughs> no, that's probably. Peer pressure is a great thing. I feel like you're being a sissy. Oh, I feel like you're avoiding the challenge. <laughs> Oscar. Do it. Do it. It's just a hawk, ham hawk. How about it? Oh, gentle. Oh. That's the strangest thing I've ever had. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty strange. Someone did that on purpose. <laughs> That's good. Dude, uh, it's not bad. It's like, I believe it's pickled. It's, like it's pickled ham hawk. And apparently, those pork hocks were laced with something. So, we headed out on Highway 44 from Interior, headed west, back towards Rapid City. This 73 mile ride felt like riding through hell for eternity in now 107 degree temps that would not let up. At least in the Badlands, there's something to see. Nope, not here, as it's all flat, dry, and wide open as far as the eye can see. But ultimately, if you don't die and keep riding west on Highway 44, you will make it back to Rapid City. And we did. Thank God. All right, we're all gearing up. This is the official patron member meetup ride event awesome weather for it and we can't wait to meet the members and lurch was not quite ready yet so popeye decided to take matters into his own hands yep you better believe it plenty of shenanigans went on inside this house what are you about to do nothing the dog outside needs ice cold water let's go see lurch <laughs> some nice ice water in there After that, we headed out, arriving at a predetermined location just outside of town, where we met up with our beloved patron members of Law Abiding Biker Media. We had a very special day planned for these folks who support us financially. We hold a big event like this each year at differing locations for the members that can make it. This is one of many benefits provided to members as our way of saying thanks. We've gotten to know so many of these members online over the years and meeting them in person always solidifies just what great down-to-earth people these are. Me and the crew love getting to know more about these bikers from all over and we enjoy growing this large network of bikers helping bikers. We were however saddened that many of our international patron members could not make it because of travel restrictions due to COVID. But you were with us in spirit and we certainly missed you. And at these events, I love addressing the entire group personally, thanking them for their support. Also, there are always one or two patron members familiar with a particular area that help me organize the events many months in advance, and I like to recognize them. And then it was time to saddle up and take this group on a ride, and I know everyone was excited to get riding. We took the group on a route that I had personally designed that would snake us south through the beautiful Black Hills and away from Sturgis. It also took us through a section of Custer State Park.
We'd also get to ride one of the many pigtail bridges in the Black Hills, which is a bridge that loops back over its own road, allowing the road to climb rapidly to gain elevation. If you're interested in the Harley ride plan for this route, I'll place a link in the description below. And about two hours later, we arrived at our destination. I had rented Chautauqua Park in Hot Springs, South Dakota for this special event, which sits about 60 miles south of Rapid City. What a peaceful, secluded, and beautiful place it was to hold this lunch and social event. In addition, I had this event catered and we all enjoyed some good old barbecue food. Everyone just kicked back, visited, and enjoyed themselves. Now, not only are these events held so that we can meet the patron members, but you see, it's much bigger than that. It's a time for all the members to meet each other and network. Many of them are friends in our private Facebook group, but now they get to connect and bond on a more personal level. Many long lasting friendships have been made over time between members. Russell Roberts is a patron member that has been very active for years now and has helped bring so many bikers together within the community. In fact, he and others are creating separate member ride and meetup events in many different locations. Russell gave us a surprise and very heartfelt speech. Cheers. 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 Thanks, Russ. Thanks, brother. He then went on to present us with a 15 year age bottle of Knob Creek bourbon whiskey. And he didn't stop there and finished by presenting the crew with a bag of nice cigars to enjoy. And I can honestly tell you that it's still hard for me, even to this very day, to wrap my head around what this patron member community has grown into over the years. And it has far exceeded my wildest imagination. But make no mistake about it, we're just getting started. Yep, it's all part of the unstoppable biker revolution. And if you want to become part of this awesome patron member community or learn more about it, I'll leave a link in the description below. We'd love to have you be part of it. And you better believe when we got back to the house, we opened that bottle of Knob Creek and enjoyed it, along with those cigars on the back patio. Thanks, Russell. Hey, you're Russell. Thank you, Russell. Oh. You're the man. We just reminisce about the day and the great bikers we just spent time with. On another free day we had, several of us visited some must-see attractions while you're in Sturgis. We rode about 30 minutes southwest of Rapid City, and once again, we were blessed with beautiful riding weather. During the ride, you'll pass through the small town of Keystone, and like many other towns in the Black Hills area, it originated as a mining town. Today, it serves as a resort town, and is certainly worth a quick stop if you have time. And just outside of Keystone, you finally see it, the iconic Mount Rushmore. Your parks pass will get you in the gate and there's plenty of parking. You really need to take the time to walk up and view it. Carved into the southeastern face of Mount Rushmore are four gigantic sculptures depicting the faces of US Presidents George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and Theodore Roosevelt. 60 foot high faces were shaped from the granite rock face between 1927 and 1941 and represent one of the world's largest pieces of sculpture as well as one of America's most popular tourist attractions. Each year, approximately 3 million tourists from all over the world visit Mount Rushmore to experience this patriotic site. Of course, there's also a gift shop where you can get some more gifts to take home to the family. A few more trinkets for the kids. And when you leave Mount Rushmore, you can ride through the beautiful Black Hills another 30 minutes to the southwest, where you'll hit another attraction. And that's the Crazy Horse Memorial. This memorial is the world's largest mountain sculpture in progress and depicts Crazy Horse, a famous Lakota tribe warrior. This project was started in 1948 at the request of Chief Henry Standing Bear and other Native American elders. The statue is meant to be a memorial to the spirit of Crazy Horse as well as the Native American people. The projected completion date is unknown, but when it's finished, it will look like this. And then there's the main attraction, 
That's right, the Sturgis City Limits. Are you sure you're ready? I'm local. I don't come here much. I only come here to drink. It is a good place to drink. I'm on the video. You take care. Yep. Sturgis, the mecca of motorcycle rallies, offers a ton of things to do and explore in downtown Sturgis during the event. So try not to blink or you might miss them. There are plenty of street food vendors along with plenty of booths to shop in. Although I could make an entire documentary on exploring downtown Sturgis, I'll keep it more focused to some of our experiences during this particular trip. I do want to reiterate that I'm humbled by all the bikers that took the time to stop me and the crew in the streets of Sturgis to just say hi. Four of the largest and funnest bars in downtown Sturgis that I suggest you visit, in no particular order, are the famous Knuckle Saloon, Iron Horse Saloon, Side Hack Saloon, and One-Eyed Jack Saloon. These establishments are all fairly close to each other in the downtown area and all offer a lot of fun. We visited the Knuckle Saloon for dinner one evening. Now, this place is always fun and has a great look and vibe to it. There is also an AM radio station broadcast booth right inside. If you're tired of eating street vendor food and want a cold beer, this is definitely a great place to sit down and get a meal. And when you're done with your meal, you can wander next door in their event portion of the building and see what's going on. This year, it was Micromania Midget Wrestling. And if you've never seen anything like this, well, it's actually fairly entertaining and comical. There was additional entertainment going on that included audience participation. And none of this even seems strange. Well, because you're in Sturgis after all. Now, when the sun goes down, things in Sturgis, well, they ramp up. Of course, walking the streets is entertainment all within itself. And when you get thirsty, one of your stops should definitely be One-Eyed Jack Saloon. I frequented this place five years ago during Sturgis, and it delivered this year just like it did back then. One Eye Jacks never disappoints and promotes a very fun atmosphere for bikers. And remember earlier in this documentary, I told you Squirt was trying to make probationary status within the club? Well, it seems the crew set him up for a good old spanking, and he's a great sport. Now, that spanking was no joke, and the bartender actually broke the paddle on his ass. It's worth noting the guy before Squirt could only withstand four swats. Squirt took eight swats like a man, but the next day Squirt had welts on his ass and had trouble sitting on his motorcycle seat. Thanks Squirt for being honest. On another day we visited the Iron Horse Saloon, which is also another great place to sit down, eat a good meal, and have a cold beer. This place, 
along with the others previously mentioned, all offer music and plenty of fun. They are all worth checking out. Certainly, another activity in Sturgis is bike shopping, which Squirt had been doing, but struck out at the Hardy dealership just days before. We're getting a new bike. I'm gonna be riding a new bike home. Huh? Yes! It's a 2020 Indian Challenge. And I'm happy Squirt got a beautiful new bike. And I was just hoping it would treat his sore ass well on the ride home. And if you ride about 11 miles northeast of Sturgis, you'll run into the new Full Throttle Saloon, which is known as the world's largest biker bar. Now, this is not the original Full Throttle Saloon, but I was blessed enough to visit the original during Sturgis 2015, right before a fire occurred and burned it to the ground in September of that year. The original Full Throttle Saloon had history behind it, a one-of-a-kind vibe, and had basically been pieced together over the years. I even remember watching some stunt chicks on a tight wire riding motorcycles overhead back in 2015. It was a badass place, and I'm so glad I got to experience it. Forgive me if I'm a little sentimental about it. The new Full Throttle Saloon is definitely different, but cool in its own way, and I don't think it was ever meant to perfectly replicate the original, because that would really be impossible. It was packed with bikers as expected on the night we visited. You can walk around and see interesting decorations and art everywhere, and it appeared some of the original decor was brought over to this new facility and put into place. There are plenty of food vendors to choose from and of course an array of cold beer and drinks. There are multiple music stages on the grounds, both in the enclosed portion and open air portion, which creates a great party type atmosphere. Overall, I had to just try to embrace the new and to forget about the old full throttle, realizing that this facility would also have history and its own unique vibe and time. The crew had a great time hanging out at the new full throttle and you should definitely stop by and visit. There is plenty to do and see. Squid and I, first ones at the bikes this morning, 6 a.m. It's gonna be a long day. Oscar and Indian John iron butted it back home to Washington State, a little over a thousand miles, like 15 hours in the saddle. Uh, the rest of us are headed for Butte, Montana today. Still a long day, 600 miles, over eight hours. It's gonna be hot. Just trying to get the blood flowing. And bam, just like that, reality set in that we were leaving this wonderful place in Rapid City that we had called home and made memories in for the past four days. Yep, Sturgis doesn't last forever, and we needed to make our way back towards our real homes and families in Washington State. Dude, you ready to roll on your new ride, bro? I am. Yeah, yeah well, much better. Ride, this little button, no well, cruise control. The cruise well, control, that's, oh, yeah. That's bro. key, that's <laughs> key. Dude, we gotta get rid of that ugly thing. Yeah. As a congratulatory prize for getting a new ride on this trip, we're gonna give you a free biker gripper. Ooh, so uh, I'll tell Rick, talk to him, and we'll send you one, bro. There we go. Now, Oscar and Indian John did leave early to iron butt it all the way back home, but I think Squirt is the only one with a proven iron butt on this trip after watching his spanking. Squirt's butt was now riding in style back home on his new 2020 Indian Challenger. Oh, and don't forget, Big Daddy was also riding his new Harley Ultra back home to Washington State. Now, we may have enjoyed scenic routes on the way to Sturgis, but that would not be the case on the way home, as we had just two days to get there. So, it was just plain throttling down westbound via Interstate 90 all the way, and just laying down miles in the 95 degree heat, and with only quick gas stops. And I'll be honest with you, I always get a pit in my stomach when I know the most exciting part of a motorcycle trip is over, because I don't want it to end. At the same time, I am excited to be going back home as I miss my family. It's really a double-edged sword, and I think everyone feels this way. 
To pass the freeway miles, you just dig deep and find yourself within. You get in a zone, and once there, you find peace. I think you all know what I'm talking about. You slow your breathing and your thinking. You simply focus on where you've been and where you're going, and all is right in the world. We would unask for lunch midday in Billings, Montana at a place called Uber Brew. We all definitely needed this break and a cold beer after laying down so many grueling miles in the heat. It felt nice to sit for a bit in the air conditioning and just visit with my brothers. Uber Brew was a laid back place and definitely gets my approval. I'd recommend it if you're riding through. And at a gas stop after lunch, we realized Cowboy was missing his right side half clamp on his front wheel axle. He called around, but no dealerships on our route had any in stock. Luckily, all was in place and tight on the left side of his front axle, so we pressed on. We'd later learn that the dealership that Cowboy took his bike to for a new front tire prior to the trip simply forgot to put the safety clamp back on, and he'd been riding without it the entire trip. Suffice to say, that dealership bent over backwards to take care of Cowboy upon returning home. Oh, time to unass, my gosh. That was a haul, bro. We did it. After arriving at our hotel in Billings, we wanted something close by for dinner, so we picked a random restaurant within a short walk from the hotel called The Hanging Five. Now, I would definitely not recommend this place for food, and it's really like walking into the past. But we didn't care much, as it was close by and had cold beer. It was more about bonding with brothers this night. You see, Squirt was about to get some news he'd been hoping for the entire trip. And congrats to our newest prospect. Oh! oh, oh on his new bike. Here, here. <laughs> yep, Squirt officially made it from being hang around to a prospective member status in the Sworn Few MC. Congratulations, Squirt. All right, here we are, last day of the trip, day nine. Some of the guys took off, the rest of us are all getting packed up. We got a about a 500 mile day, seven and a half hours in 100 plus degree heat, the way we're headed. Butte, Montana has a population of about 34,000. Established in 1864 as a mining camp in the Northern Rocky Mountains on the Continental Divide, Butte experienced rapid development in the late 19th century and was Montana's first major industrial city. Within minutes of the city center are miles of non-motorized and motorized trails, waterways offering fishing and floating opportunities, and wildlife watching. On the north end of the city sits the Berkeley Pit, which is a former open pit copper mine. It is about 900 feet deep with water that is heavily acidic. The pit is laden with heavy metals and dangerous chemicals that leach from the rock. It remains one of the only places in the world where you can pay to see toxic waste. Today was going to replicate yesterday as we once again just laid down miles westbound towards Washington State via Interstate 90. It was a gorgeous morning for the last day of the trip and started out fairly cool at 60 degrees and it felt so nice. During this long morning stretch, I think we all just realized it was almost over and just reflected on the great trip we had been blessed with. Oh, and by the way, Anything mentioned in this documentary film, such as products, sponsors, resources, and links to the exact Harley ride plan routes we rode, will be placed in the description below the video, so check them out. Also listed there are many opportunities and ways you can support me if you appreciate my films and want to see me make more in the future. By the time we reached Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, the temps had raised to 100 degrees, which is what we were used to at this point. Now. I'll admit that Coeur d'Alene is one of my favorite places to visit and is only about four hours east of my home near Yakima, Washington. It is an absolute paradise and has so much to offer, especially in the summer months. The city itself sits along the very large Lake Coeur d'Alene, which spans 25 miles in length and ranges from one to three miles wide with over 109 miles of shoreline. I often bring my family here for a quick getaway vacation where we can relax and we've made so many great memories here. 
We love to go out on the lake boating for the day and just spend quality time together. And I can tell you that the scenery never gets old out on the lake. There are a ton of things to partake in, such as dining, shopping, parasailing, longboarding, ziplining, swimming, fishing, and relaxing along the lake, just to name a few. There are resorts to stay in and a plethora of timeshares and VRBOs. The area's beautiful riding also draws a ton of bikers. And along the main strip, there are plenty of great places to unass, eat, and get a cold beer. It was our last meal of the trip together, so what better place to stop than Crafted Tap House and Kitchen, which is also a favorite of my family. The decor and vibe here is super inviting, and there are 62 taps to choose from. Okay, that might be my favorite part. The food is delicious too, and always well presented. There is indoor and outdoor seating. I can tell you that in many years of coming here, I've never had a bad meal or experience at this place, and I highly recommend stopping if you're riding through. We left Coeur d'Alene and headed westbound again on I-90 for the last leg of the trip. It warmed up to about 104 degrees and stayed near that temperature the rest of the ride home. We rode the last four hours at 70 plus miles per hour in the relentless heat, and we just tried to stay hydrated the best we could. Admittedly, I was spent when I arrived home safely, and my bed never felt so good. And let me finish this way. You see, words can't explain what it's like riding with and spending time with true brothers during a nine day motorcycle road trip like this. And I can only hope that this documentary film gave you an inside look. All in all, Sturgis 2020, the 80th anniversary was amazing. And I'll have lifelong memories of it. We got to experience so many awesome things and had so many laughs together. I truly cherish each trip we take together. I thank God for this trip and hope he allows me many more like it in the future. And if you take just one thing away from this documentary film, I hope that it inspires you to get out there and make your own personal motorcycle road trip memories. You see, we live in a very small slice of time as we travel through life. We live in the moment. We do not live in the past and we do not live in the future. The past really is gone and the future, well, it has not yet happened. All we have is this tiny moment that we live in. So embrace the now and get out there and ride bikeaholics every chance you get. Not gonna lie to you. Lurch, it smells like sex in here. I smell like that all the time. Is that you? Oh no, not me. I smell like road ass. <laughs> documentary film for a very large YouTube channel and a media company. Yeah, there you go. Give me some footage. There's some footage. There's some footage. There's some footage.